Hello there everyone and welcome to another video here with Hypnotherapy Training International. Myself, Idan, and Dr. John Butler. Hello. 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 And today's video is about New Year resolution. When we set ourselves with goals in life, but we're going to talk about the New Year resolution as January 2020 is just the footsteps of our uh, year. Uh, often people, I feel, set themselves expectations which are really unrealistic. If it's with weight loss, if it's with career change, mm -hmm. if it's with uh, they're going to earn or own hundreds of flats by the next time, this time next year. So perhaps you can shed us a little bit of light because for many people, you are really the one to go to when it comes to personal development, self-help, setting goals and Napoleon Hill, thinking grow rich. You studied so many things in that field from psychotherapy to clinical psychology uh, to hypnotherapy, you worked with Gilborn yourself very closely. Tell us a little bit about this time of year, what we can do, and also we will talk in the end about a special course which you have coming in March that, uh -huh. of course, is going to Malta. So let's start. Okay. Well, again, the key points: uh, goal setting is is an art, it's a science, and you know, you, you mentioned Gilborn there that yeah. uh, you have known that he worked with many many celebrities, helping them change from where they are and setting a goal and reaching that goal. And that requires training and knowledge in the use of the mind, mindset, which is about attitudes, beliefs, programming your mind with self-hypnosis. And now when you do work with hypnosis, you often have to work on readiness for change, the level of motivation and commitment to overcome the fear of change, the fear of failure, fear of success. And so when you're setting goals, and there are many levels and there's quite a lot of information people need to understand and deal with that, uh, to apply that knowledge to deal with their specific issues. Um, in Gil Boyne's book on self-hypnosis, it's all about change, getting ready for change, and feeling then that as you work on your self-belief, self-love, assertiveness, you're able then to feel worthy enough to continue towards your goals. Now at that time of the year, I suppose it's understandable, people feel a year has gone by, many are self-critical, with a lot of regrets, a lot of beating themselves up, but without any real change coming from it. So that's not taking responsibility, it's just simply rejecting what you've done. Yeah. Um, now, to move forward though, you need to be able to learn from what you've done. For next year, you say, I'm going to set some realistic goals. When people set very unrealistic goals, Idan, it's really a form of self-sabotage. Deep in their heart, they know they're not going to do it. Setting ourselves to fail. Absolutely. So we can beat ourselves up a bit more. We can even do that now when the time comes, we look back and say another failure. Mm. So to short circuit that, I say we go deeper into the issues if we need to. Now to start with though, we start with goals that are realistic. We use the old SMART acronym, Specific Measurable okay. Achievable, just Realistic and to a timetable. Just before we go into it, it just reminds me about programming that you talk about in in the classes yes and now you can set yourself and really how it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy that it's the program in our mind before we move to the smart of, of can you touch a little bit about program and the role that plays in really the way we enact our life maybe yes well it's going to come come to that sure. because that's the most important part of it mm. it's easy enough to make lists and these lists need to be realistic as we say and they must mm -hmm. come from our own values if we know what our values are if we know ourselves better we'll have a very different level of commitment and motivation which requires giving ourselves benefits and costs to know those if we what the outcomes will be as we take choices and responsibilities now when you said about well when we get into that area of programming it's an art as well as you know we go into a lot of detail about how to use language how to use the power of uh, words to the fullest level and then with a good hypnotherapist the power of the, the voice the power of the human ability to communicate with another human human being but that requires abilities at the subconscious level so you need therapists who have worked effectively on their own minds and with other people so that they're able they know how to deliver suggestions it's not just repeating words from a script that you got off the internet, as we often say. Mm. You need the art of subconscious communication. And so really good programming sets ideas in motion in the mind. Now, there's about 25 steps, believe it or not, in that. I can only just mention two or three here. Sure. First of all, you choose language that evokes emotion. As you evoke emotion, 
you're at the subconscious level beginning to create some level of imagery. There's a feeling tone with the images and it feeds back into the feeling, into the power of the suggestion. And unless your suggestions activate the subconscious, which means that there mustn't be too many contradictory ideas in there, those suggestions won't really go very far. So without making it sound too complicated, what you need to do is get the book that explains it well, because most books don't explain that properly. And I've worked with self-hypnosis, as you know, in many medical settings, many high achievers, and we see tremendous benefits and transformations occurring with that, with these methods. So when you get into the self-hypnosis, you're going to deeper levels of your mind, and you're going to be able to clear out old baggage, yeah, so that there's a proper readiness for change and commitment to change. And then people are able to get accepting new ideas. Now the subconscious power wraps around those ideas and almost miraculous things can seem to happen. People's lives and their careers, their health has been transformed um, because they've gone from being, ru being ruled by a lot of negative suggestions almost uh, from their past, from other people, from their environment. Now they're in charge of their subconscious. So they have a marvelous force working for them. So it's no exaggeration to say that setting goals is very critical for our lives and the goals are organic from us. There are people who are always setting goals, but the goals are not something that they nurture them really. They're just goals they think they should have. You know, well, I must lose weight again. But when you don't know what's stopping you, what, what's going on in your mind, you're indulging in yourself, yourself with food, but is it a comforter because you're not dealing with certain emotions? Is it partly bad information, bad habits? We must do a comprehensive job to make sure that those new ideas that we set ourselves to carry out are fulfilled. What happens with about, I think statistics are less than 20% of people have acted on their goals to any meaningful extent. In other words, they go for a few weeks, maybe three or four weeks, about 70% of people are still doing it. Maybe for five or six weeks, I think that figure holds up. After that, relapses, setbacks, so they lack persistence, perseverance, grit. They don't know what relapses really mean, how to learn from them. And so they set themselves up for failure, or failure is very likely. And so would, if you know enough about setting a goal, pledging, getting support, setting a realistic timetable, prioritizing, taking one goal at a time. If you set it all up well, then it's not just another year's resolution that fails and they're ringing me often three, four, five days after the 1st of January saying, I'm back smoking, I failed again, <laughs> so can you help me? We get that every year. So you're talking on a lifestyle change or an embracement? Absolutely. How to change at a deeper level. You, you're, you're, what you feel about yourself and understand about yourself because your behaviour is just the expression of your energy in the final analysis. That's great. John, before we go, can you please tell us in March, I think there's two courses coming, one after the other. Uh, can you tell us about them a little bit and what they may be able to offer our audience? Uh, okay. Well, we have our first course, in our series of four courses, it's the usual order you people take them, although you can take them out of sequence. Uh, the first one, though, usually is hypnotherapy skills for life change. Okay. And that does cover an enormous amount of information about programming and trance and depth of trance and how to get yourself and anybody else into a trance, right? How to help them into a trance because it's the trance belongs to each individual but you must be able to help them develop their capacity instead of saying they're not a good subject, you know, which is just largely a cop-out. And um, so then we help people with that knowledge, of course, one with smoking, many cases of weight management, uh, stress management, performance enhancement, uh, unwanted habits, ticks, you know, all kinds of things, helping children as well. There's all kinds of things we can do with that information. Clinical hypnotherapy takes it to a deeper level of analysis looking into the roots of problems when the programming is on its own is not enough. Mm. So instead of just relying on cognitive approaches or just uh, Dealing purely with giving symptoms. suggestions, taking on a symptomatic level only, you really are going to unlearn the negative learning, the maladaptive learning. It means going to where that information is stored in the brain in the past 
Um, it's from our past often and it's there in our minds and we have to make sure that we clear it properly for powerful, persistent, long-lasting change um, as opposed to just feeling better for a day or two with some su superficial hypnotherapy script. So really going for the root of whatever manifest manifesting in us. Going to the root. We're not just motivational speakers. That's all okay as a starting point for and, most things. <laughs> and for me, those two courses, anyone here interested in, um, you, you could be, you might be an active therapist already looking to enhance and in-depth your work. Yes. You might be totally new to meditation, to relaxation, to hypnosis, uh, and maybe career change. But for me as a person that is so passionate about personal development and self-help, those two courses, they're really... They're so deep, they're so, they're really special when it comes to, I've been reading for the past 15 years, a ton of books on that, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not going to compare it to Marcus Aurelius, but it's a little bit like his book Meditation. Each day in that course, you give us so many layers to peel away what's stopping us from becoming who we are, what's stopping us, our confidence, our, our, our decision making. Yes. I'm naturally a worry person, I have some anxiety. This was one of the first times that I really learned to shed it away from me and, and to perform in my job and my businesses perform better since as a person, I'm, I'm a better friend. Can you just say, no, we have just 30 seconds left. <laughs> How come for me, it's such a strong personal development? For me, it's a must, yeah. which is why I'm doing those videos. I, I would love everyone to experience at least those two courses. We also have a course coming in February, which is the advanced analytical. And you can, for those of you who really want to take it to another level altogether, you can watch uh, previous videos which we released on that. But just back to the point of personal development, like taking an unpolished diamond, which I believe I'm a diamond. I believe each person is a diamond. Oh, for sure. Why is it so powerful? Um, and the Gil Boyan and Dave Elman connection, and now that channels in the courses as well so powerfully. Well. Our courses are built on, in my experience, nearly roughly 40 years of, of professional practice and a lot of studying before that as well. Now, and we've taken the best of knowledge that exists. There's tremendous knowledge out there human beings have acquired from the best teachers uh, achieved down through history and the best sources. And so what we do at Yudan is put that together so that it becomes a, a transformative experience. The therapists learn to transform themselves if they apply the knowledge. And then they're working with clients to help them transform themselves at a very, very deep level. The therapist has to learn all kinds of skills, interview skills, relationship skills, the therapeutic relationship with Unearthing the core of it. skills. And now the uncovering. Now you've got, as opposed, so, so that we can go into the roots of the issues in the past, clear out the traumas, the sensitizing events, bring new understanding, uh, separation, closure, integration. There's many, many steps. We could speak, I could speak all day on that here because you need to understand about the mind well. Be a properly trained therapist, not a half-baked therapist who has a few superficial skills, something Gil Boyne always rejected. He said, you must train properly to become an ethical therapist. Otherwise, you're just, uh, well, you're just preaching a few bits of pop psychology to make people feel better, which, okay, that's not wrong, but it doesn't that doesn't constitute therapy real transformational And he read change. thousands of books people report. It was a real bookworm and he had a big library which you got to visit many times. <laughs> and eventually took over. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, he, ha he was a voracious learner and reader and on top of that extraordinary experience, you know, roughly 50 years of, well more than 50 years in total, but uh, about 55 years, let's say, of professional clinical practice. Amazing, incredible. So guys, thank you so much. I'm going to leave all the links uh, in the below so you can you can visit the website, you can see those courses and also how to get in touch directly with Dr. John Butler. Thank you so much for um, being with us. If you have any question, please leave it in the comment below. Get in touch. We'll do whatever we can to help you. Take care. All the best. Thank you.